and welcome to my sewing room. It's been two years since I last gave you a video showing you around my sewing room, so I thought now was as good a time as any to give you an updated tour. September has just begun and it's always a bit of a fresh start kind of time, isn't it? where we're starting a new school year and I've had a bit of a tidy up, a deep clean in this room and it's looking better than it was yesterday. There are still some messy areas and I'm going to show you those as well, don't worry. But I thought it'd be nice to just have a little look around. There are just a couple of changes from last time and I'm going to share my plans for how I want the room to evolve and some sewing plans for things that I want to make soon as well. This photograph of me and my gran on my wedding day will always be a special part of this sewing room. She was a big inspiration to me and she would have absolutely have loved to have seen what I have created and my little shop and things like that. I do wish she could have seen that. So these shelves are the shop shelves in my sewing room. So I have boxes with the notions and things that I sell in my small online shop like this needle threader and I also have threads and things like that and the fabrics that I use when I'm making up kits. They aren't the tidiest shelves, that pile of fabric needs tidying up and folding a bit more neatly but the bolts at the bottom don't look too bad. And this area of the sewing room has a lot of drawers in it and a lot of that is preparation for my kit so when I cut up the fabric I keep them in those drawers so it's all nice and dust free. And these small pink drawers are my project drawers and there isn't a whole lot in them at the moment but when I'm working on something I like to just put all the pieces in the drawer and then they're all nice and safely tucked away and all the things for that project are kept together. So I find that really handy. Now you'll notice that I have rather a lot of sewing boxes in this room and I really love them. Most of them are from Kath Kidson and you can't buy them new anymore I'm afraid but do have a look on eBay because they do pop up there from time to time. But in this house one you can see I've got a whole mess in there of packs of needles and that needs organising. I did say I was going to show you the messy parts of this room as well. And in another Kath Kidson tin here you can see I've got a whole array of one inch hexagons basted with Liberty Tarn Lawn. And these are paper hexagons and I think that's part of the reason why I haven't actually got on with the project and stitched them together because I do really prefer the hexiform these days to paper. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them. But I do get asked quite often, how long does the glue last when you baste your shapes? Well, I think these have been in this tin for almost three years and they are not showing any signs of coming undone. So that's good to know that the glue lasts for a really long time when you glue baste. Now this is a pot stand, it's a tile, ceramic tile pot stand from my trip to Ironbridge. This was something that my dad bought me, it has little feet on the bottom. I was going to keep it downstairs in my dining room but it ended up working its way up here and I just like having it here. So in the drawer part of this house sewing box I've got my Saju embroidery thread collection. I really love Saju threads. And I used to sell them in my shop, but because of Brexit, I've had to stop selling Saju items. Which is a real shame because they are really lovely. I really love using tins, pretty tins, to keep bits and pieces for projects together, but they do end up getting messy sometimes and in need of a good sort out. It's just another job to add to the list. And I have these mugs here with photographs on that are really special to me and they have my pens and seam rippers and things like that in. Now this is something I've had for many years. It's another ceramic tile actually and my mum bought me this and it has a stand on the back so it can stand up like this 
but you can also hang it on the wall and I just really love it, it's so special. And this is a new glass jar that I recently bought which I th just thought was so pretty and I've just temporarily put the Wonderful Alana woolen threads that I recently bought in there. They're not going to stay on the window ledge, don't worry, because I know the sun will eventually fade them, but I just thought it looked pretty for the time being. And this is another Kath Kidson house sewing box and it's got some sashiko threads and things in it and in the bottom drawer I have some hand dyed embroidery threads and things that I was using with my vintage embroidery transfers. This top drawer has lots of bits and pieces in but mainly has my sewing machine feet and bobbins and things like that and I keep them in these little plastic containers which are so pretty they have really pretty lids. Again Kath Kidson which you can no longer buy and I'm really sorry about that I know it's frustrating but just look out for pretty little boxes. These are like Tupperware boxes but they're just so handy in the sewing room. So underneath my desk I have a set of drawers that are full of envelopes and packing supplies and things like that. Not very interesting but very necessary. And on this chair that I use, it's the chair I sit on all the time, I have another Kath Kidson item and it's a cushion with a little house on it. And I just really love that, it's very sweet. And on my sewing table at the moment I have the set of fabric that I showed you in the Festival of Quilts video that I got from the lovely shop called Oh So Sweet and it is the Poppy Cotton My Favourite Things bundle of fabrics and I cannot wait to use this. I've got two things in mind for what I'm going to use it for. I'm definitely going to put some in my Quilt As You Go hexagon quilt. I'm going to pick out the colours that will really go with the other fabrics that I'm using for that but I'm also going to make a few other things and do a bit of machine sewing actually, something a bit different for me and I'm currently doing some machine sewing at the moment, I'm working on the penguin party quilt that is going to be a present for my son for his upcoming birthday and it's all in pieces in that box but I've definitely moved along because it used to be in even smaller pieces in that box which is now empty so I feel like I'm getting somewhere with that project finally and as soon as it's done I will definitely show you. So also on my upcoming makes pile is the sewing box kit that I showed you in the previous video about the festival of quilts and I bought it from the same shop I got the lovely fabrics from the shop called Oh So Sweet and I'll leave a link in the description box to their website. They have such lovely things in their shop and I really really highly recommend it. I just really can't wait to make this. Now they very kindly sent me the fabric that I wanted to get to make the purse out of. This print which is called a cheetah print because it's made to look like patchwork but it actually isn't and I just love it, it's so sweet and it was so kind of them to send this to me so a really big thank you to Lorraine, Jane and Jeff at Oh So Sweet. They also sent me some fabric which I'm going to use for the lining for the purse so I can't wait to get started on that project and they very kindly sent me this bauble purse pattern and the frame, the purse clasp as well and that's just so kind of them and I can't wait to make that and I'm going to put some embroidery on it, I've got lots of ideas for that which I'm really excited about. So again a massive thank you to Lorraine, Jane and Jeff at Oh So Sweet and I'll leave details in the description box because they have those items on their website so if you're interested in making that then you can find it there too. So also on my sewing table is one of the little house notion pouches that I recently made when I was designing the pattern. And I'm really happy to say the pattern is now available 
and in my pattern shop and I will leave a link to that below. A huge thank you to those of you who've already had a look at that and purchased the pattern. I, I just can't thank you enough, it really means so much to me and I hope that you're going to love making it just as much as I have. So I just thought it would be nice to show you what the testers made. So the very lovely Rachel from Stitch with Rachel made this beautiful version. She also has a YouTube channel and a lovely Instagram and I'll leave a link to both of those below, definitely check them out. The very lovely Claire made this such a sweet version, really pretty. She has a beautiful Instagram, Love Learn Craft, and I'll leave a link to that below so you can follow her. She's really inspiring. And the very inspiring Fatima made this version, and I'll leave a link to her Instagram. She does amazing cross stitch, embroidery, she makes beautiful things. So a massive thank you to everyone who tested the pattern. So also on my sewing table I have some hexagon storage baskets which is another one of my patterns and as you can see they are absolutely full. I tend to just pile things into them and it's really handy because it doesn't look too messy although they are definitely in need of a sort out right now but they are really useful for keeping all bits and pieces for a project together. So a very new addition to the room is this lovely print which I've had for a while but only just got around to framing and putting up on the wall. But as you can see it's called Quiet Stitches and it has some English paper piecing in it as well as some cottages and flowers so it's just the perfect picture for me, it's got everything I love in it. And it's by a wonderful artist called Rachel Grant and I will leave a link to her work below. I have quite a few of her prints. This one is definitely staying in this room but I have a few for my bedroom as well which have flowers and pottery and things on them and I just love Jane Austen and you might already know that about me but I have some little Jane Austen decorations here and these two are new this is Jane herself and her house and that's because earlier in the year I actually got to visit her house and to see the Jane Austen quilt it really was one of the highlights of the whole year for me, it was really special and I just love having it hanging there as well as all the other little messages. These are things that have been bought for me by my husband and friends and things like that and I just love looking at them. It's nice to decorate your room with special things, isn't it, that really mean something to you. So this is my pressing station and I have another pegboard above the pressing station which has all of my scissors and rotary cutters out of reach of little hands and that was something that was really important to me that they would be safe up there especially when my son was little. I also have my rulers up there and I have two sets of rulers. I have the Cute Cuts rectangular set which are pink and I think there are six rulers in that set, five or six, and also the blue square set as well. Now when I bought them I was really hoping that I wasn't going to feel like I'd wasted my money because I only use one or two, but actually I love having the different sizes and I find them really really useful. So again I have some more little trinkets, things that mean a lot to me over here by my pressing station on top of this lovely set of drawers which I bought many years ago from Laura Ashley. I have a wool cutting mat, only a small one, but it does the job. And I have my Oliso iron, which I think I've had for three years now. And 
Again, it was another big purchase that I was really hoping I wasn't going to feel like I'd wasted money on, but actually it's brilliant. I'm so happy to have it. It does have one little bit of damage on it, which I've no idea how that happened, but everything else about it is absolutely great. And I really love that it is in this horizontal position. I think it makes it much safer than having it stood up on the end. And I just wouldn't be without that iron. I think it's a really great purchase. So coming back to these drawers, I think they're so sweet. I love the little sewing illustrations on them and I tend to keep things in them to do with what's drawn on the outside. So the one with the sewing machine on has machine needles in it. I tried to do that anyway. Now I'm really sorry that these drawers aren't available, but again keep looking on things like eBay because I have known someone to have been looking for these and have found them on eBay or something similar, maybe Facebook Marketplace or something like that. So keep an eye out, they were from Laura Ashley. So this is what the room looks like when the door is shut and you can see that the double doors are the biggest storage cupboard in this room and I have my fabric in there and lots of notions. And on the top of the cupboard I have three big boxes and that holds all my works in progress, my big quilt projects. And I'm going to show you inside the cupboard, it's definitely messy. Last year or the year before my dad helped me put some extra shelving in here so then I could organise my fabric into baskets and this worked really well. It isn't tidy, the baskets need reorganising a little bit because I have just thrown things in here and there but I just wanted to show you an honest look at what it's like inside here. So in this basket it is full of mostly solid pieces of fabric but there are a couple of leftover pieces of the gingham fabric from the penguin quilt that I've just thrown in the top of there. But I do try to organise my baskets with solids in one and then check stripes and spots in another and then quilting cottons and then I have some baskets that I just have liberty in. This is one is supposed to be just quilting cottons but there are a few Liberty pieces that I've snuck in there and that's because I'd grouped them together for a project and then just popped them on the top when I hadn't actually got to making it yet. So I have this basket with some cross stitch patterns in and some other kits and things in there that are on my to-do list and this other basket has embroidery hoops and little quilt hangers and an embroidery frame in there as well. So for my Liberty collection I have two baskets and this is the main basket of my Liberty Fat Quarters and yes I have got rather a lot and I won't be buying any more anytime soon but this is a collection that I've been gathering over many years, probably about five years now, maybe six years and I don't buy that much anymore because as you can see I have a lot and this basket has just leftover pieces that are bigger than what would fit in my scrap boxes again there is a lot in there as well so I really need to get using them up and this section of the cupboard this shelf has lots of notions and things like zips this basket is full of all different zips different colours, different lengths, so I have them ready to hand.
So that's a little look in my messy cupboard, which I really try to keep organised, but it does need a bit of time spent on it, which I'm going to do this month for definite, because I just like to be organised and then I know where I am with everything. Now recently my dad very kindly put some daylight strip lights into this room here. Now on camera when I switch it on, it's going to look quite yellowy because I need to adjust the settings on the camera for this lighting setup, but him doing this has meant that I can work in the evenings and still continue to film, which has just been really useful. So a big thank you to my dad for doing that for me. And that's about it for the room really. Over here I still have my trolley, it's looking very messy and I would like to replace that with like a small cupboard or something. I'm thinking about getting a small filing cabinet type cupboard to go in this space and I'm also in talks with my dad about putting a design wall onto this wall so taking off the hexagon organizer and the notice board that I have up there and putting a proper design wall up because I think that would be really useful so we've been talking about it and if we do it I think we'll make a video about it so you can see how we tackle it So thank you so much for joining me today for this tour, I really hope that you enjoyed seeing around my room and I really look forward to seeing you in the next video. A massive thank you to the very lovely patrons who are supporting this channel and to those of you who've pressed the super thanks button, it really means so much to me and I'll see you again very soon. Take care, bye bye.